Alright everybody, welcome back to your guide for tanks and everything else that we can cover here. So I'm going to go over this Shinobi Tribe file that I have here because it actually does have some decent tanks. And so what I'm going to try to describe to you is what it, what is a tank and what is not a tank. Because a lot of times you're going into battle and you're thinking in your head, can I put this monster in the front line? It's going to survive. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. Most of the time you have a good feeling you're probably right. But then again, there's, you know, if you're new to this game, this is really going to be for more newer players that are trying to get into this game to understand it. I'll go over other stuff in other games as well that I can understand and do well with, but what I want to say is that you can make certain monsters into tanks with gear, but I'm not going to cover that because that gets a little too... I don't want to say it's going to get convoluted, but it's going to get complex in a way that I think you can experiment with that later on as you go forward. What I want to do is just cover the basics just go over what monsters can be in the front line and what are a little optional, you know. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to it as a tank or I'm going to refer to it as a tiny tank, which a tiny tank would be like a, a possible flanker, somebody that stays on the side, tries to hit a couple things, but it's not like defending the front line core of your units to really... Uh, save your back line from a lot of damage. Let's say you're going in with a bunch of mages and uh, you need somebody to to tank for you to take the damage so that your back line mages don't take a lot of damage. That's what we're going to cover. So let's get into it today. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, you know, definitely punch one of those buttons down below and all of that. But <clears throat> let me talk about some stuff here. We'll get into other reasons and ideas as to what is a tank as far as rulers are concerned we are looking at the shinobi tribe here the great mother talia right up here and um, i'm just going to cover what you see on the right over here as far as what we can uh, deduce but um, right off the bat i want to well i need to click on the game i guess uh, all right so we're looking at a ball mod here right um let me see if I can uh, probably do some drawings on here. I don't know if I can. Let me um, let me just put a check mark as to what is a tank and what isn't a tank. So you kind of get to see. Here's a check mark over this dragon, this dragon, this phoenix. Uh, this is a really good tank. So I almost want to put a star there, but I'll put a little little dot next to it. Um, here's a tank. Here's a tank. And then we've got all these guys' tanks back here. We've got more people we can look at, but essentially you're seeing like right off the bat kind of what I'm showing. And I'll break it down a little bit slower here so that this goes a little bit easier. Now, <clears throat> the reason this is a tank and not a flank is because it's a ball mod status. So you start off as a Wyvern, you move up to a Kowatl, and then you turn into a ball mod as you move up into classes. Now, Quaddles are kind of the middle road, and they could be a flanker, they could be tank. It uh, it kind of depends if the enemy team has a lot of mages or not. But at the start, when you're just getting this guy, when you're just getting a wyvern, they're just flankers. You might think they're tanks because, yeah, they can be in a front line, they can hold up a pretty decent defense, but they just don't have a lot of defense. Only when you turn into a ball mod can you actually go out in front and tank it. And you can turn into a flanker if you want and swing around the back. They're really good for being kind of like ninjas in a way. They can get in the back line and do a lot of damage. Um, plus they can kind of like hit and run with their breath. They're really good in a lot of ways. But tank, definitely. Okay, now we're looking at the Mithril Golem here. <clears throat> Which I might have to actually move my... My big fat head because you know you might you might want to see some of the names there so um uh, but uh, mithril golem is the highest you can get and yes it's 75 it doesn't cost very much comparatively to other things uh the only reason it doesn't cost as much is because the agility is bad it's in the 40s here so as we can see the agility right here on the right if you look on the screen here the agility is at 44 and so, yes, it does have insanely good defense. It's got a pretty decent attack that HP is through the roof. Um, it's just, the reason I'm gonna call it a tank is because it's, you know, it, it just tanks. It doesn't do a lot of damage versus like something like here where you see the agility 
139 on the bottom right over there, it, it can hit all the time. With low agility, you're going to have a low threshold to hit the enemy with. So, yes, you'll be able to take a lot of damage, act like a tank, but you don't have the, 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 the accuracy of the cannon to shoot the thing you want. So, really, you're just looking at putting an obstruction in front. It can throw from a good distance. It could hit. If it does hit, it does some good damage. But the agility is so low that I wouldn't really consider it a very good offensive front line. Now this, you can make this into a tank with gear, um, but really only with gear. They're just too squishy otherwise. I would call them a tiny tank, if anything, or a flanker, whichever one you want to call it. Now phoenixes, when you grow them, they start off as a, uh, they start off as a rock, which a rock, you might want to think it's a tank, but as I've been playing the game through, they're really not they are flankers, and the same thing kind of goes with the older game with the uh, the Griffins, and <clears throat> this game is really just a combination of Rock is the Griffin and the Rock from the previous uh, incarnation, um, but yeah, the original Rocks, yeah, they got some good stuff, they're kind of nice, they've got status effects, they can turn to stone, it doesn't matter as much as, as, as it does in the previous game, but um, they're just, they're just not tanks they're they're tiny tanks but once you turn into a phoenix or a simurg like we have the phoenix here she says right above here phoenix it is a tank it can heal itself it can stay in front lines is it as tanky as some other units defense wise no but agility wise yeah it can kind of evade sometimes and the self-preservation heal that it gives itself all the time now yeah it's a little bit different than the previous incarnation of the original game where you know you do an area heal and it heals itself this time it does an area heal it doesn't heal itself but it does heal up its friends and everybody else so it's um a little bit of a toss-up but it is a tank you can use it as a tank uh this is a healer you can use them as frontline guys if you want i wouldn't recommend it though um here is your ranged guy here this is a centaur and so yeah this is a nightmare nightmares come it's weird they should call them zebras or something because they have two white and two black dots they're not truly like the same nightmare as before they got heals and hurt spells so not exactly the same thing but um, here's your centaur that's a range they're always ranged no matter if you're high centaur or not don't don't consider them to be tanks they never will be they could be dodge artists but you have to guarantee they can always dodge, and this game doesn't guarantee that, especially with the pincer effect that they put into this game. It doesn't guarantee it. So here's another tank here, the Phoenix, and now we're up to dragons here, which a lot of people want to kind of know about. They want to see. Now, what's the difference here? Now, like, here, I move my big fat head, uh, Thunder Dragon, Dark Dragon. You can see all these extra dots because it's gear. All these um, little parts down here just signify that I have equipped it with gear, so it has a headpiece. And it has a clause, but as you see, this is uh, grayed out here. Well, I use the term grayed out, but it's it's darkened, so it's not equipped with that. So just makes it kind of easy to see. But um, <clears throat> really, when it comes down to dragons, you're just picking your flavor. Do you like cherry? Do you like apple? Do you like blueberry? Which one do you want? You know. Um, and when it comes into going into battle, really, you kind of want to match the enemy's um, elemental color or be better than their elemental color. So like, let's say you're going up against Talia's team up here and they've got green, a lot of green in their team. Uh, you want a fire dragon or a green dragon because the reason I say that is because you want to be defensive against them or be offensively stronger than them. Everybody's gonna have a little bit of a difference of opinion on that. And it's because some people wanna play more defense and some people wanna play more offense. And so I recommend if you're going to go up against another team, pick their element and what they're weak against. It just it just creates a situation where if you really needed to defend somebody and they all had green and you have one green dragon, it's like that's the pinnacle guy or girl or monster that's going to be in the front that's going to be able to deflect most of or mitigate most of the damage. So that's what I recommend, recommend there. But um, you choose whatever you want. You want to make it hard go for it you want to make it easy go for it you just don't care doesn't matter just pick a color 
you know, you got thunder, you've got fire, you've got ice, you've got dark, you've got holy. Um, eventually they turn into ancient dragons, which are ridiculously strong. Maybe some of the absolute best tanks in the game. Unfortunately, very slow, don't move very far. So that's a little downside, but they're very, very good. So you really just pick whichever dragon you want. Initially, they start as green dragons. They're tanks immediately. They're always tanks. So dragons are always tanks. Golems are always tanks. The Balmot, for the Wyvern to Balmot class, not always a tank. Um, try to jot some of this down. Try to rewrite some of this down. Or just save this video for later. Share it with somebody else to let them know. But I'm just telling you right now, the flavor of dragon that you want really will depend upon how you want to present yourself in battle and what you're up against. If you want to take my advice, which I'm trying to give you the most professional advice I can give, is uh, if you're up against an enemy and you have to choose an element that they give you a choice for, uh, it's like, you know, Simurg, which is holy dots, or Phoenix, which is red dots, pick an element that you feel comfortable with that you probably will be able to beat the enemy with. So. Um, if you're going up against, um, let's say, um, let's say Morelva's team or Norzalio's team that has mostly blues, uh, Phoenix might be a little weak to that because blue beats the red because water puts out fire, right? So maybe consider that. But, um, as far as dragons are concerned, just pick what you want. You know, I would recommend what I said before, uh, strong against or the same. That's what I would recommend. Um, any other brand of neutral element, yeah, you know, maybe it wouldn't matter so much, but um, I, I choose to prefer a better option. Um, okay, here Nightmare again. That is a healer. Now, this is a Lizard Lord right there. These things are awesome. Now, they start off as little lizard men, which I would consider them uh, tiny tanks. You could consider them tanks if you had a lot of them, but they can go down. So lizard men eventually turn into these lizard lords, which they can go twice. Um, well, they turn into their lizard men, they turn into lizard guards, and then they turn into lizard lords, which is the same thing as lizard king in the grand edition version. The only difference is instead of having three blue dots, you have a blue and a white dot because of Lord, I guess. You know, the title of Lord, you know, it's like heavenly, I suppose. I don't know why, but you still get to go twice. Um, Agility is really good. Defense is pretty good. But the reason it's not um, super awesome is because they have, a, they have a shield block ability here, which is 25% chance of blocking with a shield and reducing damage by half. They do this a lot. It's so hard to kill a lizard man that I would say they're definitely tiny tanks as lizard men. Once they turn to lizard guards, then they are tanks. So lizard guards, the second tier up, the middle tier, that's when you can tank them efficiently in the front line and feel comfortable. Now these guys are just, they're initially giants. They turn into cyclops, so they lose an eye, and then the eye gets put in the center. I don't know why they did that, but they do that, and um, eventually they turn into titans, which are even better. Um... They're tanks, but they're squishy tanks. Now, the reason I'm gonna say that is because sometimes they can stun, and when they stun, it just basically stops the enemy from being able to do anything for a turn, maybe, possibly. But they can stay in the front line and they can effectively tank because of the amount of hit points they have. That's really what they're about. They have a little more agility than a clay golem or an iron golem or whatever golem you choose to have, so they can hit a little bit more um, on average. Um, but um, they don't have any, until you turn into a Titan class, they can't really throw anything, do any super amazing stuff besides a stun move, but they are tanks. They're probably the lowest form of tank you can have before coming to a tiny tank. I would have to say that, that that's what they are. But once you get them to third tier of Titan class, which is, is super, super good, I'm... I'd have to say on par, maybe even better than the dragons, uh, cost-effective wise. Now maybe the dragons do spit a little further with their range attack and they do that, but just, uh, it's kind of like an underdog story with the giant class. It really kind of is. So they're just like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to get better, and then 
you know, oh, I'm a lot better now. And then boom, it's like God mode, boom, activated. And then you're just super good. So I'd have to say it's something akin to that. And I don't know if you agree or not, but that's what I would have to say. All right, moving on. Uh, man eaters. So this thing is a tank at the start. And this is what I said. This is what I said for a long time um, before we even got this game. It was um, I want the mandrakes or the man eaters to be able to heal in the forest and become a tank like thing. And boom, we got it. It's here. It's right there. So these guys are tanks at the start. They they're pretty squishy, but they have a lot of hit points so they can handle it. They do heal in the forest a little tiny bit. But as you turn them into the next tier and then in the final tier, they heal a lot. And then it's so hard to kill them because they can constantly paralyze from a distance. They can constantly paralyze up front. They can turn things to stone with their eye gaze. These things are, these things are brutal to come against if you have to go in a fight in a forest. Be very careful of them. You need to have fire spells to take these things down effectively you're just going to have a hard time otherwise so are these things tanks absolutely from the get-go and the cool thing about it is they have free range attacks from the start as the beginning um man as the beginning mandrake i think this goes yeah mandrake man eater and then um basilis um basilisk i forget you know i get mixed up with that name but uh yeah they are very very good so, if you get a star one of these, like what we have right there, make sure you keep that in your team. All right, so we get another one of these. These are angels, these are backliners. Here's a fire dragon here. Like I said before, with dragons, fire dragons are really good. Now, the only extra up and downside for the dragon class is that once you turn into ancient dragon, they're automatically converted into just red dots. Now, you can change that with gear and add more elements to them but a lot of people are like, I don't really like how that works. I'd rather keep the element that I, I wanted. And I understand. I totally get it. But it just happens. So if you don't want to convert into an all red dragon as an ancient dragon, just keep them just keep them as a dark dragon, a thunder dragon, a ice dragon, whatever you want. I know there's a downside to not being upgraded to it, but at least, you know, you get kind of what you want. So that's how that goes. Here's a holy dragon here. Looks kind of like the original brand anyways, just a little whiter. And here's the waverns that I was talking about. This is what you have to start and then eventually it evolves into the bomb mod, which is the best thing. So these guys would be flankers. These are not tanks. Here's a healer. This is the unicorn. First kind of healer you get. But honestly, if you had to rely upon a healer the most, I would recommend a unicorn. Now, angels are great for heals and all that, but they're real wallop. They're kind of more of a damage dealer from distance, and you get more bang for your buck by doing divine rays than you do as heals. I, I know you get maybe more heals out of them than a unicorn, but really these guys, the heals for them are supposed to be supplemental. Uh, it's really supposed to be about just doing straight up damage with divine race with angels and the holy words and stuff like that That's that's kind of where you want to go with that um, Unicorns just focus heals if you want to make a nightmare, you know, you you can do that these guys are support Mermaids are support. Um, they can be damage dealers, but even if they turn into a siren They're not tanks. I don't care what anybody will tell you and you know, I've played this game a lot a lot more than a lot of people have and uh, they're not tanks the only way you can make it a full up tank is getting them like all gold gear matching gold gear for the spear the robe the hat and the ring that's that's the only way you can really do that and then you gotta kind of pray that they won't get surrounded and you know taken out um, these guys are flankers they eventually turn into liches once they turn into revenants they're still flankers They'll never, they almost never truly turn into a tank. Um, you might say they could turn into a tank with gear. I'd, I'd love to hear the argument for that. But they are pretty squishy. They don't have a lot of agility. They can get hit pretty hard. They kind of heal when they hit, so they kind of absorb a little bit back. But even still, I've never had... Um, 
I've never had a perfect game where I've been able to save one of these, even as liches as a top tier, where they didn't just get walloped by an attack. It's, um, they're just, they're really good flankers. I'll say that much. Um, and, um, yeah, here's some of the lower class here. Iron Golems are just kind of underneath here. And, uh, yeah, still tank, 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 tank. Got a lot of tanks here. And the other thing we didn't even get to talk about yet was the uh, giant snakes here. So the giant snakes eventually turn into this huge um, hydra. They, they kind of reverse the terms from the original to this one as far as how they class up. So it's opposite of what the original game said. So this is the first tier, then it turns into blue snake and eventually turns into like a pinkish purplish snake with a bunch of heads all around in the flower shape, which... Um, I'm sure uh, my friend Pringer said that uh, it looks more like a flower than a snake, which I wonder if you could argue that, but sure. And maybe that's true. Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, the giant snakes here, they're tanks to start. They are, I'd have to say maybe they're a little squishier tanks than uh, even, maybe even the mandrakes. They're probably the squishiest to start, but they become probably some of the most powerful ones at the end. I don't know if they... Well, I guess they they do kind of beat the ancient dragon because blue beats red. Uh, but uh, in the in this game, there's a there's a trifecta, right? There's red, blue, green. They all beat each other. So you know, um, mandrakes. Yeah, they'll beat the giant snake and all that. And then red dragon will beat the mandrake, and then you know the snake will beat the ancient dragon and stuff. So. It kind of goes in that circle, and it really depends on the flavor that you're looking for and the element and kind of monster you're able to summon and what you can use. Snakes are amazing. I'd have to say versatility-wise, might be the best. Absolutely the best. Once you get them in the water, the Maelstrom they can do is so strong that they can literally just go out there by themselves and just demolish the whole team just by themselves. Now, yeah, you run out of the breath eventually, but as they stay in the water, you know, there's that little water heal that they get, which kind of just kind of is even better than the Mandrake's heal. And the evasion they get in the water, so the evasion, the extra healing, the hit points, probably the best tank in the game. I'd have to say maybe hands on best tank. Now, I know, I know you're probably saying, well, the Mithril Golems have got so much hit points and stuff and it's so hard to kill them. No, it's not really because they have no intelligence, so Divine Rays and Magic will just waste them away in a short matter of time. And your defense with Magic really depends upon your intelligence. Now, yes, 57 is not that great, but 0 is 100 times worse. So I cannot say that the Golems are the best. I'd have to say the Snakes are the best. Um, and we're looking at the Dragons versus Snake as far as intelligence goes. It's, it, it kind of fluctuates around the area. I haven't really thought about that too hard. But what I have known from playing it long, long time is that the snakes just hold up better in a front line more than anything else. So this game is kind of a reverse than the original game where the original game was like, dragons, dragons, just going with dragons. Dragons are reliable. And, you know, that was true. You know, but then you get people being like, oh, I'm sick of seeing everybody use a dragon. You know, it's so easy to win with a dragon. They reversed it. Now the snakes are the best thing ever and the dragons are not. <laughs> so if you're using snakes, you're going to have a, a lot better time. All right. Now, these guys are high dogs. I don't know why it's called high dog, but it's, it's just a uh, high dog. It turns into a Fenrir and then turns it into a... Oh, no, it turns turns into a Hellhound, then turns into a Fenrir. Uh, even when they turn into the Fenrir, they're not tanks. I, I wanted to say they're tanks. I kept trying to justify it in my mind that maybe they, maybe they just are tanks, and I just don't want to believe it. They're not. Um... They're very, very good flankers, but their low intelligence is akin to a Golem. Not as bad, but one Divine Ray will almost totally destroy it. It'll take off maybe 400 points of damage once you get it up into the final tier. So you're like, yes, I'm final tier. Now you're even weaker <laughs> to, to Holy Words and Divine Rays. It, it makes it a little hard. So these guys, I'd recommend just focusing on flanking. You know, if you want to keep them alive, that's great. But just, just make sure they're, they're hit and run and they're staying on the side to flank. They're not going out in the front line 
taking all the abuse. Leave that for this guy. Or leave that for this thing. You know, this snake. Leave it for something that is a tank. Even a mandrake. Even with... And look at the intelligence on this mandrake. 76. You know? Yeah, it's, it's high. But... Is still way higher than a dragon, you know? So I'm just saying, like, you're looking at something in the front line, uh, a lot of hit points. This is really just an evasive attacker, and they want to be a tank, but they're not. <laughs> so, all right. Um, yeah, here's the um, the rock we were looking at before earlier. Here's a demon, arch demon class. You're wondering about what are the angels? Are they... They're they're ranged guys they're in the back line for a reason they don't have a lot of hit points a couple attacks will knock them down um, they didn't they don't really gain the same kind of agility they used to in the original so they can't evade as effectively so don't count on them being frontliners they will die very quickly uh, you do have stones to revive people in this game which makes this game super easy in that sense you don't have to well yeah you lost it just go quest for one of those revive stones find a place where it shows a little crystalline stone you can quest for that's a revive stone and then you probably get it back and pay a little mana cost and boom there you go the only problem is don't count on the revive stones too much because you know what'll happen you lose all your gear as soon as the monster dies all the gear gets taken away and now you gotta quest for that gear again so yeah don't don't hope you know for that all the time but um yeah that's a lot of tanks right there i wonder if we can just cover a couple other things this is a support unit not a frontline tank let me see if i can just let me see if i can do something like this here let's uh all right this is perfect all right so uh da -da -da. I'm just going to hover over this. I'm not going to go through it too deeply. This is a flanker. This is an elemental. Very much like the Jin from the original, if you don't know what those are. Um, I think I have most of the monsters in here. If I don't have most of the monsters or if I forget to cover something because there's a vast amount of monsters to cover, please let me know in comments down below. I will go over it. I will talk about it. Um, this is the high-level demon called a Lilith. Still not a tank. <laughs> Still not a tank. Uh, this is the highest level golem. It's a shadow shadow golem Flanker not a tank unless you got the right kind of gear, but that's a little tricky. So I wouldn't go over that um, Let's see um, uh, Yeah, that kind of covers a lot of it really I'm Trying to think about what I might have missed here. Let's see about summon info here if I can Find something I missed. I just want to go over some of the capitals here, and then we'll just wrap up the video here I know you know, this is a good sized video, but uh, I hope you got something out of it, you know, as far as what we're talking about here, because I'm trying to help you out. Um, here's the original giant that turns into Cyclops. I know, two eyes to one. I don't know why they did that, but they did that. Uh, that is a thing. Let us come over here to, I think this is the capital, right? Yeah, Gahar, Gahar. Uh, we talked all about this stuff here. Here's the mermaids. Those those turn into the or, yeah, those turn into the sirens, which are still not tanks. Um, here's the elemental class. Here, these are little flankers. They die very easily. Just count them as a flanker. Not even a tiny tank. Just a flanker. The snakes, the rocks. Um, these guys do protect spells. Let's see here. These are the capitals. We probably have almost all the equipment we're looking for. Here's the Mandrake, um, which is, you know, a tank still, the first version of that. Uh, I think we're covering everything, honestly. I don't think there's anything left to cover. Here's the Goblins. They turn into Shadow Goblins, just flankers. Here is the Bronze Golem. So, so instead of the Clay Golem, my apologies, uh, they went started with the Bronze Golem, and they went to Iron and it went to Mithril, so they kind of did it like that. They're like, let's not do the clay golem here. We don't need that. Um, here's the dragons, the initial dragon that you see here. You can see starting INT is 54, which is pretty good, but, you know, meh, it's kind of meh, not that great. Um, but yeah, I think we covered 
pretty much everything. I don't know if I missed anything. Let me I think I I'll look at one place here. No. Why don't I just do that? It just makes it easier. I'll just press press the R1 button and just flicker through all of them just to just to see. But they kind of put, you know, the nice thing about this game is they put a little bit of different uh, elemental creatures everywhere. So it's mixed all over the place instead of the original game. You know, if you're in a holy team, you get angels. If you're in an evil area, you get demons, you know. Uh, this game kind of mixes things up a little bit so you actually get to, you know, have a variety of things. So you're not just going into the thing with just a bunch of, like, hellhounds or something like that. You're like, I don't want to do that. Um... Yeah, here's the original Wyvern here. This is just a flanker until it can turn into a tank. You can use this as a supplemental tanker. But be cautious. They, they go down pretty fast once they get hit or surrounded. Because the reason I'm saying that for this game in particular, not the original game, is because of the surround effect. Once you get pincered, your evasion goes to zero and you get crit more. And it really comes down to how many hit points you have and how much defense you have. And they just have average defense, not a lot of hit points okay but you know that's 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 my reasoning for that i hope you uh hope you understand that but yeah like here these guys are are flankers or tiny tanks until you get them into the higher class of lizard guard and they'll turn um a yellow color and then the final one you got to get an item you got a quest for that to get a lizard lord which they go twice they have react automatically and they're just super super good but yeah, these these guys are really good flanks. That they're lizard men are the best flanks in this game. I know we could talk about mandrakes and all that. Mandrakes can beat them, but mandrakes are tanks. Lizard men, if you want to use them effectively as a flank, they're probably the best because yeah, they don't go the furthest, but they can randomly shield block and they have random shield block to just move around. Just we'll just put a stranglehold on the enemy and they can't really move very far um they're really good to move around and do stuff but especially since they like to move through the um you know they have they, they kind of have like uh let's see but let me just let's grab this here oh oops here's all my uh resummon re stuff here which i probably could go through but look at all this stuff that you can resummon you press this button up here this um this Y button. I think my screen is reversed, but you press this Y button, you can do that. But, um, yeah, we pretty much covered all this stuff here, but let's look at this. So, yeah, this is, um, they're swamps, so they like water. So every time you have a water area, whether it's ocean or swamp, they actually gain ev evasion, which there's a lot of water in this game. There's a lot of swamp and there's a lot of water in this game. They gain evasion and then they can just move around. So these guys are super good at getting to places because they just are and i'm sure you can agree with the original that in the original game they were also super super good at doing what they did they're still really good now nothing has really changed maybe just some of the formatting just some of how it's presented to you like the breath attack uh they do a shielding block and stuff like that but just amazing little tiny tank so if you're trying to think what is the best tiny tank this is the secret right there this guy um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, and I'm on my Shinobi uh, file right here, so, you know, about to go into the final battle, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much a conclusion of that. I hope that that helped you. If there's something I missed or I could do more of, just let me know. Comments down below, that'd be great, and I will get to you in the next video. I know it's like a half an hour video, but it's a lot to comb through. It, there, there's... I could do, I could talk about so much more when it comes to this that uh, we could turn it into a class. This is essentially like a class right now. But um, yeah, if you want to know any more um, about future things as far as this game or the other game or, or even other games, if you have any ideas for some other games that you think I could delve into and I could be of help for, uh, let me know about that. The next up video is going to be the battle and going into a medium battle and kind of showcasing um, uh, novice novice gameplay. I, I'll title it something like that, novice gameplay 
for coming into a battle and trying to come out clean or as clean as you can from the start. So, all right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for hanging out.